Nova, Liquid, Queso, Mugi. Who will be the next to join our illustrious group of world champions and engrave their name in Clash Royale history? Hello and welcome to day two. I am Andrew Guy and day one was nothing short of breathtaking. We saw confidence translate into dominance. A two HP, three crown finish. And our current reigning world champion showing us he hasn't lost a step. But for four of our competitors, the road has already come to an end. And for four more, they find themselves clinging to hopes of world champion, including fan favorite, Mohammed Light. By the end of today, we will give away 200,000 more dollars. Say goodbye to half of our competitors and be left with the final six for our final day. Day two of the Clash Royale League World Finals starts now! There was some interesting moments here and to help us out, breaking some of those down, we've got Jackson, Juicy J. Wall. Juicy, this was a strange match overall. Uh, you, of course, know Sweep very well, and uh, this is one where it feels like Sandbox was just playing reactive Clash Royale. Absolutely, I think that Sweep is really trying to maybe snipe the more solid Sandbox RG, not the Mother Witch, Skelly King RG. He had a lot of single targeting units like the Mini Pekka. We didn't have a good way to deal with all of those units, and I yeah, just wasn't able to hit that snipe. And I just think he was overall over aggressive. Let's hop into this telestration if we can. All right, so he played Sparking back. He went for the Giant. At this point, it's really aggressive to go with the Graveyard here. I think at this point he should be going for only this giant Sparky push, maybe supporting it by going for this Graveyard. Even though the Mother Witch is out of cycle, the defense are on Sandbox's end with the Zappies and the Bar Barrel, where Sweep doesn't have enough Elixir to counter those units, as well as defend the Skeleton King. It just was over aggressive. You can see Sandbox's celebration here. You know, Sweep just not having the correct um, splash units to deal with that Skeleton King and over aggression. And at this point, the game's lost. And yeah, you make a very good point here. This was still early in single elixir. I mean, when we see that Skeleton King on the right-hand side, barely a minute of gameplay has passed. This seems like a deck that would have been maybe a bit more frustrating to deal with in double and triple. Absolutely, yeah. You go Sparky and back, you do get the value. Like I said, maybe go for a giant, support it with a Mega Minion. Save a decent amount of elixir for that push on the right, at least a Mini P.E.K.K.A. or a Mega Minion on top of that. And then maybe you sort of save that graveyard for a surprise factor, like you said, in the Triple Elixir. Next up, it's the kind of match that made all these people come to Finland. Two of the all-time greats, it's Morton and Moogie! All right, I mean, Juicy doesn't get any better than this. Two of the biggest fan favorites in the entire game. This one hurt my heart to have to choose between one or the other. Absolutely, me too. I end up picking Morton. One of the main reasons for that is in the only match that they've played this year, Morton actually won. That's right. He beat him in a 2-1 set. He started off doing bait, and then he went to minor poison control. Did not work out well, but he was able to close things out in game number three. I doubt we'll see the exact same order in all three of those games with the decks that they chose, but this is going to be great. Both of them looked indestructible yesterday on the stands. Moogie, it was calm, collected, it dialed in, predictive plays. Morton, it was all about that confidence and experience. Absolutely. I was very surprised by that, actually. Obviously, the four-time world finalist, Morton, very, very well vetted. He has a lot of experience. Moogie, I didn't expect him to play that calmly on stage like that. Moogie, Morton, day two, game one. Let's go. Miner coming in on the right-hand side. Skeleton Army going to clean that up. Fly Machine for Morton, maybe a Lava Miner deck. Skeleton Army and Skelly King on the board as well. Could be a Lava Mirror matchup, but as we know, that Skarmy Skelly King combo is very versatile. Could be Mortar, could be Graveyard, could be a lot of things. Well, Morton played Mortar for me yesterday, so maybe, maybe Moogie wants to do it for me today. I know that's really what it's all about. And that's exactly what's going to be happening. Musketeer drop to the bridge here on the left. Going to snipe out that Inferno Dragon. Skelly King from Morton going to do a nice job of cleaning up the other Skeleton King. But here's a Mortar at the bridge. Skeleton King ability just barely able to drop here. Going to distract that Mortar for a bit here. Allow those Skeleton Dragons to take it out. As one minute of regulation ticks away, we have two untouched, or four untouched towers, I should say. Maybe even six, technically, with the King Towers. 
Snowball gonna make sure that happens and keeps going as well, pushing those skeleton dragons back, preventing any chip damage. Tombstone in the middle for Morton here, just gonna prevent any sort of miner or mortars coming down. And a Miner pulls a Bascom to the right here. Miner goes to the back. Obviously, no NATO going to be in this deck. So Mugi already varying up his placement, something that you need to do very early on, especially at this level. And this matchup gets a little bit interesting as we move forward and double and triple Elixir because the options to clean up air is basically just the Musketeer, and you got to keep baiting out those bats with the arrows, correct? Absolutely. If you can bait out the bats with the arrows, then Mugi does have the opportunity to spam with the Skeleton King. You can fill that Skeleton King ability with the Skarmy or your opponent's Tombstone in a situation like this. So Morton getting a decent counter push coming down this lane. Nothing to write home about. But Skeleton King does stay alive. He does pop the ability. Mugi does tick to 10. And a Poison will clean all that up with just a little bit of damage in. 24, 44 to 27, 62. I really like Moogie's idea to switch lanes, go opposite here, force out some arrows, fill up the Skelly King belief from that Tombstone and his own bats as well. Love in the back from Morton. I want to see some pressure from Moogie at the bridge here. I think you have to since the arrows are out of cycle. Do you think he goes back to the right-hand lane here, or does he double down in the middle? I think split lane pressure could be useful. Looks like he's going to go for the same lane, though. Very nice poison value yeah. there. Taking out the Flying Chain and one of those Skeleton Dragons. And look at the Lava Hound. It's gone. Yep. Bats and Musketeer on top of that Lava. No need for a spell. No need for any help there. Yes, one Lava Pup or two-ish gets on tower, but nothing significant here. Really 24, nice. 44, 22, 48. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah, really nice uh, Tombstone from Morton there. Just going to do a good job distracting this mortar once again. Inferno Dragon going to clean that up as well. Flying Machine on the left. It's going to do its best. I like the Skelly Drags. He's spreading yeah. out his units to prevent poison value. And a great job there using that Skarmy to protect the mortar, which got the arrows out. And now we see a little bit of an effect of that on the left-hand side here. Down to 16, 22. Mugi is playing a very, very nice game number one. Yeah, the most important. Oh, the Musketeers on the tower. Three shots down to 9, 10 already. That was a lot of damage. The Musketeer protection is on point for Mugi right now. Morton's trying everything in his power to try and take out these Musketeers, but look how much value. Flying Machine's dead. Skelly Dragon's dead. And now here comes the Miner on another push. Mugi did win his 20 win challenge on his at least first account with a Miner Mortar deck. But in terms of this, he's in our competitive scene. He's gone 50% with Mortar as his win condition. And an easy game one win, if you will, for Moogie. Does the Muskie get it or does the Mortar shot get it? It's the Kobe shot from the Mortar, and Moogie's up one. Wow, today my predictions are going to the wind. I was first place yesterday, but <laughs> Moogie's looking like he's very comfortable in this set right now, absolutely controlling that game, never letting Mortar, Morton, ever to have a chance to get a good Lava Hound push. All right, let's take a look here at a replay that we have as our two competitors decide what decks they want to bring out in game number two. And Juicy, this is where things started to go uh, from bad to worse. Absolutely. Look at that Musketeer taking out the Skeleton King, then the Flying Machine, and then locking on the tower here. Morton just not able to react quick enough on that one. Game number two. Coming your way. You can see there the little bit of a creator badge for Morton, one of the biggest channels in English and in German, getting close to half a million subs very, very quickly. Log here from Morton, followed up by a ghost from Moogie. Giant Skelly in the back. See another Giant Skelly deck from Morton, maybe RG, and most likely a drill bridge yep. spam from Moogie. I'd be really surprised if he pack a bridge spam in a situation like this. 100%. Moogie does look like he is going to go to drill like we talked about. It's his most popular win condition. He's played it 24 times in competitive with a 75% win rate. Morton on the other side of it looks like he could be going with another maybe drill deck with a different version, are you thinking, or you think it could still be RG? I definitely think it's, it's RG. RG. There it is. Ooh, the failed, oh, the failed kite on that Gold Knight dash. Huge connection there, but the RG is taking some nice pop shots over here on the right. Yeah, RG just ticking away on that tower. You can hear the crowd getting excited, but the counter push is coming in. Morton has six elixir to deal with it. He's got to deal with the Royal Ghost first, and then the cannon cart, and one giant skeleton should be able to do it all. And that's what this deck is all about, right? You want to have very nice defenses and huge counter pushes with all of your bridge spam units. But unfortunately for Moogie, this giant Skelly is just going to absolutely clean everything on this land. Morton, not a big time Royal Giant player in competitive. He has played it 18 times. His numbers are really all the way across the board. He's very versatile. But with Royal Giant, he's at 50% win rate as well. So maybe trying to go to something that is obviously not as predictable with the cards that remain after game number one. This is most likely the game plan from the start, even after that drop of game one. 
And that's the difference here. Mookie going to his comfort more than trying to be unpredictable. I really would like to be Mugi in a situation like this where you know exactly how to play your deck and the comfortability is going to mean that you know, things are gonna go well for you. And another Golden Knight connection here for Moogie. Morton cannot catch them. 1959 on one side, but Morton is in the lead with 1766 with that big time uppercut early on from the Royal Giant. A lot of elixir expenditure on the left hand side for that ghost. Are we gonna see an RG to compete and push with this? I don't think so. So Ewiz and Barbara are gonna clean everything up here, but. Not exactly the interaction you want, yeah. but the Ewis does stay alive. Log actually changes that story quite quickly. Drill on the counter push. First drill we've seen this match. Ghost is going to pick that up very nicely. Giant Skelly going to prevent that Gold Knight dash finally. There we go. That's Yeah, finally, I think, <laughs> is a great way to put it, Juicy. And I bet Morton feels the exact same way. Now he's trying to turn the tables as 20 seconds Ooh. remain in our regulation. A lightning comes down to clear the path. But Mugi has 10 elixir. The giant skeleton gets to the tower. Is it there? That is oh there. My God. It's there. 962 remains. 1959 is the lowest for Morton. And the German swings back into the game. One giant skelly bomb is all it takes. Mugi had the elixir. Maybe the nerves are starting to come in finally for him as well. Just not able to get that. He was down in time. Yeah, I mean, he's talked about nerves. I'm pretty sure Morton's heart rate right now is about 37, whereas Mugi's might be around 200. You gotta be feeling good after a connection like that. I think Mugi does have a chance to maybe come back. You're not in lightning cycle radius quite yet, but you have to have perfect defense from here on out. And now it's the thing with the late lightning, early lightning, how's it gonna work? You see this time Morton not doing it too early, but the RG does get, I think, the retarget on the cannon, but the lightning damage came in. Yep, no RG shots there, only lightning damage. Moogie needs to stack everything in this left-hand side, but the problem with that is you do give the Lightning Valley, so he decides to go to, in the opposite lane here. Magic Archer in the back, Gold Knight in the back. He needs to build up a very big push in order to come back right now. Yeah, and the toughest thing with that is we've seen this numerous times already in day one. You just start stacking that giant skeleton in the lane that you know your opponent's gonna pursue, and it just really clogs it up, and of course that giant skeleton bomb makes it really, really tough. Magic Archer almost always getting taken out by these giant skelly bombs. Cannon cart goes on the left-hand side. Bar barrel plus Magic Archer here on the right to try and get a connection. Quick E-Spear plus Hunter. Magic Archer lines up. Moogie's got some shots in. The Giant Skeleton turns around. The Giant Skeleton turns around 528 to 655. And all of a sudden, this game is really close. Close. Two Giant Skellies on the board, though. Oh, here comes the RG. Can Moogie defend this? This is huge for Morton. He needs to make sure that RG gets on tower. Moogie lightning, or NATO's it back. No lightning in yet. Drill on the defense, that is the power of the drill. You can use it for offense, you can use it for a defense. A perfect log, a perfect log! The lightning comes in and needs to come down, and Morton will even things up. We're going to game three. If there's any match in this entire tournament that I want to see a game three, it's this one right here. Wow, what a game number two. And again, you look at Morton and Moogie, both of them have so much experience. They're both incredibly confident. They look incredibly dialed in. And you can see the audience right now losing their minds as you and I lose our voices. <laughs> yeah, losing our voices for sure. We're heading into the third match. We have RG out, we have Mortar, we have Drill out. We're going back. I don't know, I'm guessing we're gonna see some more comfort from Morton in this game three. Right now, game three, let's go. Moogie always sending out that good luck before the match, a Goblin Barrel coming from Morton. This is Morton's favorite win condition. He has a very low usage rate because he doesn't want to be too predictable, but yeah. when he does use bait, he's got an 83% win rate. That's right, and only 18 games with bait in our competitive format, an 83% win rate. If you guys remember last year's World Finals, he had an incredible come from behind victory when he looked like he was in a horrible matchup against Mini Minter, but Morton can always, always come back in those final moments. Speaking of horrible matchup, check this one out. He's yeah. got the roll delivery, he's got the log, and he has the fire spirit. Moogie has come prepared against Morton for his favorite win condition. On the other hand, Morton does have that bomb tower versus the pigs. That, that will be true. useful. That is a very, very good point that you make, Juice. 
heading into the rest of this match. Morton really needs to try and outcycle that log and put himself in a situation where Mugi does not have enough elixir to get that roll delivery down in time. That's the, one of the only ways to get damage in a situation like this. It's so tough to keep up with the cycle of either of these decks, and you know they're going to be on top of that cycle. Dark Elven gets some good value here on top of that cannon. Really nice queen taking out the Dark Goblin. Generally, that's what you want to be doing. You always want to take out the Glass Cannon with your Archer Queen because she does provide that counter push value in two ways. You have the ability, you can get on tower with that, but you also have the three card cycle to cycle a bunch of pigs and maybe outcycle that bomb tower. You can see there, Morton, not happy about that one shot. And you know, a lot of people at home might be wondering, it's just one shot, it's still early on, but in this type of matchup, when it's quick, it's fast, it's loose, every little stab, every little shot from that AQ counts, it is all very, very important. Moogie on the other side, 11 times he's ran Royal Hogs and only a 55% clip there. The other thing about a matchup like this where it's so tight and you're defending each other so well, it's very important every little bit of damage because a lot of the time it's going to come down to spell cycle later in Triple Elixir. Exactly. Guards, also very nice versus the Archer Queen. Morton making sure to over defend his left side tower, our right side tower here, to make sure to not let him increase that damage lead. I know, you talk about the matchup for Moogie, but like you said, Juice, there's such good responses for Morton as well to deal with the Hog, to deal with the AQ. And that's Snowball, I mean, that's like the spell that you want in this situation. There you go, Snowball comes down, pushes Ooh. the Hogs away. And the Hogs on the left-hand side getting some great damage in. The big thing there is Morton was finally able to chip away a little bit with the Goblin Barrel. He outcycled the log. He went for the Goblin Barrel while Moogie was focused on offense. Moogie thought he could do the Ice Spirit or Fire Spirit plus Skeletons combo, but he played the Goblin Barrel in the front. That's oh, a huge play. And he's late on the delivery. Another three stab from the Goblin Barrel. 2034 to 2150. Morton feeling himself. He goes, all right, I'm at 10. There's a rocket, and Moogie has to be feeling the pressure. Bomb Tower and Dark Gob on the defense. Wow. There's no way these pigs are going to get through for much. Maybe one hit. One the, little piggy snout. That's it. That's it. But the rocket is so valuable in a situation like this. Earthquake is not enough to keep up with something like that. Morton goes slightly tricky on that barrel to the back instead of the front. I really like the idea to play the Arch Queen in the back here. Get that three card cycle activated. And you need to be spamming pigs and outcycle that bomb tower. This is your moment. And I just don't know how he's going to beat this cycle. Morton is so on top of it. The Ice Spirit, I believe, still allowed the Fire Spirit to connect. It did. 14 13, 11 42, 85 seconds. Check out, he used this pigs. No, the pigs did not keep the Arch Queen alive. Can he break through this bomb tower right now? Goblin gets a stab. Piggy's in the lane. Snowball comes down with the earthquake. 1251, 902. Morton is a couple rockets and a log away. Or Snowball, excuse me. Skeletons do pick up the Dark Goblin. He's trying to defend. Dark Goblin's on the tower. Log comes on the Goblin Barrel. These pigs are chipping away, though. This match is so close. Morton goes for the rocket. Moogie needs to apply so much pressure right now. Morton going in with the Dark Goblin. He wants that elixir on defense. It's Piggy's on. Gonna come it's down. on. The Dark Goblin's on. 63 HP. I don't think Log does enough. He, he definitely does it. There's the Mighty Miner. Mighty Miner changes it up. And there's, there's the rocket. rocket. There's Morton the rocket. Has the done queen. It. Oh, the queen almost got the shot. The queen almost got the shot. The rocket takes it just in time. The four-time world finalist takes down number one in the world. Here we go. KK Air Surfer game number one. Good lucks from both players. Zappy's in the back from Air Surfer. A very calm start. KK with the Ice Wizard. Interesting. KK does like RG. He does like a graveyard. Wouldn't be surprised to see a graveyard, maybe even splash up from KK here. Looks like it might be Barbarrel plus Ice Wizard out. Barbarrel cycled behind. King Tower there and a Tombstone, feeling like it's going to be GY. Splash up, one of those decks KK is pretty comfortable with. He did win the 20 win challenge with it. Juicy, you are a big time lover of Splashyard. You are exceptional when playing it. How do you feel about this matchup thus far? So far, I mean, I think KK has a fairly solid matchup. I'm not sure about Air Surfer's win condition quite yet. It is Pigs. That is not too good for Air Surfer in my mind. With the Tombstone, with the Nato, with the Slow, with the Bar Barrel, there are so many options. There really is. As long as KK... Oh, but the Arch Queen. The Arch Queen actually makes a huge difference here. Queen's one of those cards that really gets a lot of value versus Splash Shard. If Air Surfer can protect his Arch Queen in this matchup, he's going to have a solid chance. That's right. He, you know, he can get that Arch Queen down in the back. Giant Skeleton up at the bridge to body block. Make sure no tanks come across. 
And interesting for both of these competitors, the Mini P.E.K.K.A. also kind of a fascinating pull. I think the other thing here to mention is K.K. is not using a champion in his Splasher deck. He's using the Valkyrie. That's definitely going to put a damper on his ability to keep up with Cycle. And yeah, if he had a Skeleton King maybe for the Mini P.E.K.K.A., it could be a lot more useful. Valkyrie's still going to get some solid value against those Royal Hogs. K.K. 68% win rate with Graveyard in our competitive scene. And do you think that's a mistake to not have Skeleton King in this deck? I I'd be surprised if he uses it anywhere else, and maybe he will. Maybe he'll come out with a Mortar Skeleton King deck we've seen a few times. But do you think not playing Splash Yard with a champion is a mistake at this point in this game. I really do. Uh, unless he's specifically trying to save it for like a mortar spam deck later down the line, I think a champion can help you a lot, especially when you are going against the Archer Queen in order to outside with Archer Queen and apply a lot of pressure with multiple graveyards in Triple Elixir. So not a whole lot has happened thus far, and no surprise there as graveyard players usually like to sit and wait for a while before they go in. Really big mistake there on the early activation of the Archer Queen ability is really going to provide almost no value. And that is not something you want to be doing in this matchup. You want to get insurmountable amounts of value from your Archer Queen because KK just really doesn't have a great job of stopping it. So Giant Skeleton set up in the back here for Air Surfer as KK still decides when he wants to pull the trigger on his win condition. The one nice thing about having the Valkyries, you can cycle multiple of them. So he's not afraid to cycle that in the back, and he knows he can cycle back to another one on defense for versus the Royal Hogs if he needs to. Ice Wiz and Baby Dragon on this left-hand side, just kind of stalling, stunning everything out. Once again, Valkyrie is back in cycle for that Archer Queen. And we are going for a Graveyard now as it hits into overtime. First GY down, Bar Barrel comes in, Giant Skeleton in the back to clean up. Obviously, Giant Skeleton not the best option for cleanup, but it is going to be great in terms of that counter push. Fisherman up to body block, make sure not a lot of splash gets on tower, but still gets two shots in here late. 21-84 to 27-19. I really like the patience from KK there. He waited for the Arch Queen to be out of cycle before he went for that graveyard, and it was the perfect moment. That big dragon getting a lot of value, preventing the counter push and getting some nice shots on the tower. And he might go right back in here. We'll find out in just one moment. Instead, he sets up an Ice Wiz on the other side. AQ is out of cycle for the moment. Mirror and last a card. mirror giant skeleton comes down and a graveyard defensively here for KK. I'm sure he's very, very happy he did not sell out. I respect that defensive graveyard. A lot of the time is a nice play against a big tank like that, especially when he wants to save his Valkyrie for the Royal Hog specifically. Archer Queen doing her thing, getting a lot of value once again here, kind of taking out everything, forcing out a lot of Elixir. Here comes a Valkyrie. Are we going to see Graveyard? Absolutely. Baby Dragon is down the board with no Queen, and Cycle's definitely the right moment. And Juicy, just one thing to talk about here. Actually, let's look at this final moments. 15 seconds remain. Huge arrows value. Valkyrie on the defense, getting some nice, doing a nice job of just cleaning up absolutely everything on the board. KK and should have this in the bag. No giant skeleton bomb to get on top of tower. You know an arm and a leg is going to be spent on that Archer Queen. And with two seconds remaining, Air Surfer will drop game number one. Mookie, undefeated, I believe, on the weekend. Yeah, KK really just controlled... Or KK, I'm sorry, undefeated on the weekend. <laughs> KK just really controlled that match. That was precise splash yard gameplay. Defending, going for a graveyard here or there, but overall just making sure your opponent is never getting any sort of damage. I don't think that Mir is very viable anymore after that nerf. Um, the other thing in that matchup is even if you do mirror your giant skellies, that 5% HP nerf kind of compounds on the mirror nerf. Oh, interesting. So I think he, if he wanted to win that match, he needs to be using the Arch Queen better, like I said, but maybe going for some mirror roll hogs. He never went for something like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, that is always a devastating thing. You don't have a lot of elixir, you don't have a great response, and that second set of royal hogs comes down. Can be brutal. But Dark Goblin back out. He's been a champion for a handful of people today. Vitor, or this weekend, Vitor and Morton reaping the rewards of one of my favorite Ooh. cards in the game. And that's going to be three big shots in. Barrel goes to the back. Arrows come down. And Brawler, while maybe under-celebrated, had a big day yesterday. He definitely did. That Dark Goblin and that Fire Spirit connection at the start there is something you never want to see if you are KK. Air Surfer's got to be feeling great right now. As a bait player, get that much damage in the first minute is huge. 22-16 to two untouched towers. And if you had to pick, what would you say KK is running right now? How do you feel about this uh, lava matchup? 
Definitely Lava Hounds. Matchup wise, it's really going to depend on Air Surfer's building. A lot of the time, this is going to be like a bomb tower or a cannon. But if Air Surfer does happen to have an Inferno Tower, he's going to be absolutely vibing. Air Surfer ran into Inferno Tower yesterday, and while he thought he still had a good matchup, it did not appear that way in his game number two. He was able to take that set. As the first lava comes down, Dark Goblin goes opposite lane with Mighty Miner, and this is usually the idea. They drop a lava, you got a pressure opposite lane, and I don't know what KK's gonna do to stop this push. Arrows is definitely not enough. That's, that Dark Goblin's been not locked. The, that's not the play. You gotta let it go. The tower's already gone. The arrows come down. That's three elixir out of your wallet, out of your bank, and now Air Surfer has a lot to deal with just a Lava Hound. Not only does he not have that three elixir that he could be supporting this Lava Hound with, he doesn't have the arrows for that second Dark Goblin that Air Surfer places right now. That Dark Goblin's gonna clean up everything. If this Miner could connect, it and could be enough, but it doesn't. And look at that, almost a double drop there to make sure maybe if it doesn't get right on top of that Miner immediately, the Cannon will help, the Mighty Miner will help. Beautiful protection there of your Glass Cannon. Learned that yesterday. Yeah, that that was a beautiful interaction there. KK, with 30 seconds left, I don't think he can come back. So first Dark Goblin cycled down. Fire Spirit does get the lead on all of that. Great placement, great timing, and the rocket gonna come in. Nice. It hits everything but the lava, but that's okay. Mighty Miter comes down for Air Surfer, and it feels like we are at an inevitable game Inferno number Dragon. three. Inferno the Dragon is on the tower! No way. The Inferno Dragon is on the tower! I cannot believe the miss right there! That Mighty Miner building was not quite able to hit the Inferno Dragon, not able to push it back, and the guards took out that Fire Spirit, and now we have another Mighty Miner oh, on the tower! But Air Surfer decides to respond with an Inferno wow. Dragon of his own! The Mighty Miner on the tower after the Inferno sizzled it down, and if you just saw Jack's face, Jack is Air Surfer. He lets out a big sigh of relief and a big smile on his face. Yeah, we've been seeing the Mighty Miners and the Inferno Dragons absolutely drop towers today. That Mighty Miner ability to squeeze on that right-hand side tower is such an important spot, and I think KK just didn't recognize that the Mighty Miner ability would be back in I, cycle. Yes, that is so great that you point that out, Juicy. You hit the nail on the head. All right, here we go. Game number three between Air Surfer and KK. Whoever loses has to come right back on stage. Let's go. And the patented Air Surfer emote will say that until he retires because it makes me happy to say it. <laughs> makes me happy when you say it too. <laughs> Ice or Fire Spirit is countered quite nicely by Snowball, Spear Gobs, and Bats are going to cancel out as well, and a log from KK. So it looks like a cycle mirror matchup for win conditions. I'm not quite sure yet. A drill from KK. See how Air Surfer defends here. Skeleton King, very nice defense. So maybe a Mortar versus Drill Cycle situation right now. There's the Mortar. Mortar comes down. Mighty Miner to catch. And Cannon to soak the damage. I like that Cannon. You have to play that. You don't want to allow the Mortar to splash on your Mighty Miner and the tower there. Yeah. Although this will clean up those Spear Goblins, maybe not optimally placed there by KK. Fire Spirit has to come down and distract that mortar shot, and now here comes a Miner. Bats are here. The Snowball is in cycle, though. And Drill comes out again here for KK. He goes for the pre log, maybe looking for a Skarmy, but it's not there. He does get one goblin shot, but I'm not sure how useful that is. Huge counter push right now, and KK doesn't really have that much elixir right now. He's got four, he places the Mighty Miner, but the Skelly King ability is gonna drop, and that Mortar is very healthy right about now. Yeah, Mortar very, very healthy. It should lock Ooh. on tower, and that is a big time lock, so Spear Goblin's got to have to, come, have to come down. Maybe a Snowball after this Musketeer defends. No, decides to just let that Mortar go. Musketeer will play double lane duty here. 25, 6, 24, 80 to 25, 20. Spear God's actually getting quite a bit of a chip here. Here comes a bit of a counter push. Minor musky bats. Fire Spirit is not oh, able to wow. jump. It's not jumping. The Musketeer is protected, so a fireball has to come down. But you know KK is thirsting for Elixir. We'll see how Air Surfer wants to punish. Maybe a Quick Mortar? Quick Mortar would be nice. KK does have that cannon cycle. If he does go for Mortar, he needs to protect it. He decides to cycle Snowball. Wait for KK's next play. Here comes the drill. Skarmy finally does come out. Skeleton King to the front log. Gonna fill those souls right up. And when Air Surfer has run Skeleton wow. King, he has a 80% win rate, and that is a beautiful mortar prediction with the cannon. You love to see that. 
one of my favorite plays in the game because I hate mortar so much. What? Nothing against you. Get out of here. You're off the desk, Juice. <laughs> we don't have that blasphemy here. <laughs> <laughs> Miner is chipping away. On the other hand, Air Surfer is constantly perfectly defending these drills. There's really no connection happening for yeah. KK right now. And I love the placement of that Musketeer too. Gonna clean up the bats, gonna be far enough away to not get fireball value. 23-31 for Air Surfer, 16-50 for KK. Cannon comes down, no attempt at a block. Maybe a little surprising because KK has been so on top and you know that Cannon's right back in cycle. But still, Air Surfer decides to not overspend and go right back to defense. There are mind games with that sort of thing as well. Yeah. A lot of the time, if you do go cannon at the bridge right away, like you did last time, Air Surfer would maybe not predict, expecting uh, uh, KK to right. defend in a different way. That's a very good point that you make. The mind games at this level are always fascinating, and the Skeleton King actually turns around to try to help clean up that drill. Now, 1776 to 1650, the gap narrows by quite a bit. Speaking of the gaps narrowing, the miner is very, very consistent, but as we head into Triple Elixir, the drill is able to apply a lot more pressure, so we might be seeing KK take a damage lead very soon. And KK does get the fireball on top of the Musketeer and on top of the Princess Tower there. We'll see how he wants to respond. Fire Spirit to kite first. Now the cannon comes down. Still nothing there to block by Air Surfer. And that's just a tough drop for him. KK's doing a great job, as you said, Juicy, with those mind games, but Miner Almost taken for those bats. Does get on tower for a few seconds. Mortar! And that's going to splash on tower. Mortar gets a huge shot. I think Air Surfer needs to be protecting his mortars he does. more. I My mean, 6K experience tells me he does. <laughs> mortar's going to drop and, and another And cannon. now KK knew that he was going to go for it. Gets it down early on. And you love to see plays like that. KK limiting the future, but look at that Stormy. Log comes down late. Bat on the, the right hand well. tower. Bat is going to town. 561, 1403. 30 seconds left. You have to keep this Mighty Miner alive. Get that three card cycle rolling and go for drill on drill on drill. But Air Server has so many counters. He has this Garmy and he oh, has that Skelly King. The cannon behind no. the princess. A massive misplay for KK. 13 seconds left. And after that mistake, there's just no way you can come back. Miner's going to be chipping away. Drill is not enough. And that's going to be game. Air Surfer staying alive in our upper bracket. He will be facing off against Morton. And of course, Sandbox and Basoto will see those four matchers or those four players tomorrow. But Air Surfer stays alive and KK goes down below. Wow, what a match. It was a roller coaster of emotions. And my throat. Yeah, my, my, I my know. voice is gone. My throat is absolutely shredded. Okay, well, let's see this game. I can't wait to see. Heading into game number one, the first player that uh, that was knocked out in an earlier round but was still able to play a second time today lost his match. Moogie, on the other hand, was able to recover. It's going to be interesting to see if it's going to be Lucas able to get the victory or if it's going to be another defeat. Lucas starting off pretty nicely. He's got a minor cycle deck versus a bait. That's definitely a solid matchup. As long as you have a log for that Golem Barrel, you're definitely going to be in a good situation. Yeah, oftentimes with the Miner, we do see the Quick Cycle accompanied by it. So we see the Ice Spirit, we see the Poison. It's going to be either a log or a delivery. We've seen a few different variations throughout this tournament. It is a roll delivery. That's going to make a bit of a difference if Vitor is able to outcycle, which definitely he will later on the line since Lucas is using guards instead of skeletons. Lucas is just not going to be able to get that roll delivery down in time to stop the goblins. Yeah, we saw it in uh, Moogie's game against Morton where he had the log, he had the delivery, and he still wasn't able to recover. What did Morton say? He was saying that like he had the matchup, right? If, I mean, he did say that once again. I think he was like majorly modest because he had so many counters for that Goblin Barrel. But you are right, with the three card cycle, he's able to outcycle the log. And then Mugi just wasn't quick enough with those roll deliveries. We'll see if that seems to be the case here in this match with Lucas. Mighty Miner not able to predict. A lot of the other cards, you know, they kind of just walk over quickly. The Mighty Miner does take his time. Kind of unfortunate, and it's kind of one of those situations where Mighty Miner, you could arguably say that you should play the Mighty Miner just delayed, just on top of the Miner, and it's one of the only cards where you can even make that argument. Absolutely. Goblin Barrel getting so much damage here on this left-hand side with that roll delivery out of cycle. Interesting idea from Lucas to use the roll delivery on the Dark Goblin. I feel like that's just not your priority when we're talking about use of the roll delivery in this match. 
So 740 HP separating the two players. Vitor on the bottom does have the rocket, and he's going to use the rocket on the Archer Queen. I love that he's not trying to get too aggressive. He's not trying to spell cycle just yet. He understands how to play the matchup, and that's exactly what you want. You can play the rocket whenever the Archer Queen is out on the board. The other big thing about that is he negates his opponent's ability to have a three-card cycle while placing his Mighty Miner to activate his own. And now he's going to be cycling Goblin Barrels to to the ends of the earth to try and get some yeah. major connections. Yeah, that's actually a phenomenal point. I didn't even register that it's a three-card cycle versus a four-card cycle when you always have that rocket in hand. I mean, he's just going to be able to get to it every single time so quickly. Dark Goblin on top of the minor, misplayed Skellies. This could spell a little bit of trouble. The game does get a little bit closer, but now this is where the Fire Spirit plus the Goblin Barrel, and that is going wow. to get some chip. 1053, 900 HP separating, and Vitor is playing a phenomenal game number one. Super nice gameplay from Vitor, like you said. And then on the defense, look how solid it is. Just bomb tower, rocket the queen, make sure there's no problems. Miner gets one hit, maybe a little poison chip, but he just needs to get this tower into two rocket range, get that mighty miner down, and use that three card, three card cycle to get that win. I love these Fire Spirit plus Goblin Barrels. Actually, I think it's Goblin Barrel plus Fire Spirit interactions from Vitor. It's just going so aggressive onto the tower. Does he have enough elixir where he can Ice Spirit, then delivery, or delivery and catch everything? And usually the answer is no. We do see Fire Spirit plus Goblin Barrel. Ice Spirit will be able to connect. That's a great defense. I mean, he didn't really have the right cards. And then there we go. Guards on defense against the Mighty Miner. You make a really, really good point about the Fire Spirit Plus, or the Goblin Barrel Plus Fire Spirit combo. Not only does it apply a lot of pressure with the Fire Spirit potentially always being able to connect, but you also cycle back to that Goblin Barrel extremely quickly when you're using the cycle card after placing your win condition. Triple Elixir underway. We do see the Mighty Miner plus the, and this is one of those fantastic pushes. These Dark Almonds, I, I, I will change the way I play Dark Almond now because these Dark Almonds from all these players, you see how much value you can get, especially when Triple Elixir is happening. Very, very close match all of a sudden. I think Vitor needs to start rocket cycling. Maybe not. Goblins oh. are going to connect right now. Okay, there we go. 399 just has to get the rocket down. Should be game over. And there it is. Vitor 75 taking game number one. A phenomenal game overall. And we will see who's going to take this victory. And maybe, just maybe, Lucas will force it to a game three. Let's see. Let's hope. I, uh, I wouldn't mind a game number three for, you know, the first time we're casting on uh, the casting desk. Good luck from both sides. Minor from Vitor. Lucas picking up that minor quite nicely with the Ghost plus E Spirit. Zero damage taken. And maybe, just maybe, Vitor is kind of copying his opponent's deck here after seeing this minor plus delivery combo. You know what? I, uh, I don't know. I feel like I must have seen that interaction somewhere, but it, it just kind of makes me happy to defend with a ghost on a miner and still receive zero damage. It's just not really something I get to see very often. That is actually exactly what I was thinking. I'm not gonna lie. It's really fascinating how he was able to defend for just one more elixir, but have a very nice counter push. Forcing out that roll delivery. Giant Skelly in the back from Vitor, so not going to be a mere matchup. Once again, I'm always confused to see the roll delivery and the Giant Skeleton paired together. I feel like they kind of do the same thing at blocking a lane. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. It's just, it, it, I mean, they they work together, but maybe it's just because they're a little, you, you can't go fast enough. So if you have two different cards that kind of do the same thing, well, if one's out of cycle, you just can use the other. That's actually a really good point. Lucas trying to get a King Tower activation versus that Miner, but Fisherman placed one tile too far to his left. Roll Delivery can come down and get a very nice value taking out that Fisherman and e Spirit here on the right. And a little baby counter push. How does Lucas want to defend? The Skellies over the middle will stop the Royal Recruit. So Lucas isn't going full cycle like I hoped, but, uh, but enough of a cycle where I can still be happy. The RG Lightning Skellies e Spirit will just have I mean, yeah, just have that quick cycle, but without the champion, I, it, it could have been faster. I'm, I'm, I'm still okay with it, though. Absolutely. RG is actually Lucas's most used win condition in Clash Royale League this year. He only has a 54% win rate. Queen going to drop here on this Hunter and a bit of counter push for Vitor. Will need to defend it. E-Spirit over the bridge, going to defend it perfectly. Archer Queen will pop its invincibility. The I-Spirit will be able to help out the Archer Queen. So a very valuable Archer Queen takes out the Ghost, most of the Fishermen, the Skellies, everything and everywhere. And uh, just a great reset from both players.
Another giant skelly in the back to match that RG in the back. Lucas trying to find a way to break through in this match. It's going to be difficult since Vitor has such great defensive options. Like you talked about before, having that roll delivery and giant skeleton is going to be very useful for those dual lane and double RG attacks. Yeah, the giant skeleton, the guards, the ice spirit delivery, I mean, and the cannon. You have five cards that are actually solid defenses. I mean, ice spirit is kind of weird to say it's a solid defense, but really it is a solid defense against it. And that is a beautiful activation. The ice spirit is played terribly though. One tile too much in the middle and it's going to hit the arch queen entirely. That was a huge mistake from Vitor. Another mistake from Vitor was on that right hand side. He played his Giant Skelly too far low, and that Ghost is actually able to connect for quite a bit of damage. Luke is going to take that damage lead now. A great spot to reset. Giant Skeleton will be able to have its bomb take out most of the fishermen, but not entirely. Giant Skeleton cycled in the back behind the right side, and we are just going to see aggressive defense on the left. Miner plus High Spear plus Cannon, and probably the guards as well. And there we go, we do see them placed down. Lucas trying to get that pre-log onto the guards, but Vitor delaying it just enough, a bit of mind games there, in order to prevent that prediction and have a very solid defense. So we have a minute, 15 seconds left, 300 HP separate the two players. And right there, Archer Queen does get two shots, 100 HP separate the two players. But now Vitor has the lead. Who do you think has the advantage in these waning seconds? A lot of the time with minor control, you want to have a much larger damage lead by this point. Lucas is going to be heading into Triple Elixir, be able to spam RGs, spam lightnings on both sides. It could be difficult if Vitor can't have perfect defense. Yeah, and one of my favorite things about the champions being, and this might push it, I think no. there's an opportunity to push no. it, and it does. RG gets to the tower, Log will come down, and that is going to be two shots, tower down to 1585. Huge advantage for Lucas in these seconds. Vitor's own giant skeleton preventing himself from having a clean defense, pushing that RG away. And now we're seeing some spell cycle come through, but Lightning does more damage than Poison. It's going to be very difficult if Vitor wants to come back in this match. Defensive RG on top of the Archer Queen, not something we often get to see. I think earlier in the today, we were able to witness some hogs on defense. Ghost will be able to take out the Archer Queen. Miner going to town, not going to matter. 10 seconds left. Two giant skellies, guards, he's spamming everything, but look at this RG kite from Lucas. He calls the good game. He knows that all he has to do is stall out. One more lightning to secure it. Good gamer, we're going to a game three. We're heading into game number three. Vitor with the wall breakers in the back. We're seeing more and more players do this instead of directing at the bridge. They have time to react to their opponent's play, or in this situation, forcing Lucas to leak a bit of elixir at the start of this game. Yeah, it's one of those plays where I know it's the correct one, but I'm never going to implement that in my own gameplay. I just want to see a lot of cards on the board. I think, yeah, you know what? I, I really do believe I have ADHD. <laughs> Vitor with the Mega Knight on defense here. Lucas, I'm not sure what deck this is. Maybe a Mega Knight deck of his himself. What's um, happening? Yeah, he does not have the correct cycle. This is a mini P.E.K.K.A. and a Mega Knight on top of the tower. Luke is just tanking it, and we're not seeing any response from Lucas on his face. He just didn't have the right cards right there. Wow. Mega Knight finally going to come down on the defense. Maybe it was in the cycle earlier. And already, Vitor has an entire tower and some on the left and some of the king. Lucas is going to try and counter push. I don't even know what to say. Yeah, I don't think it's going to matter. The bats are in cycle. Inferno Dragon locking onto the wrong card. Mega Knight will get the tower down to about 1,800. Will it get the last shot? The it drill? The What's drill, happening? Right? Vitor doesn't What's have happening? answer. Can he push it off? Oh, see the zap. OK. Oh. OK, OK. Everybody calm down. Not going to happen again. I thought it was going to happen again. I was not calm. Fortunately, zap does come out. And Lucas is not going to be making that crazy comeback quite yet. Ram Rider here. Mini Pack is going to clean this up very nicely, though. That feels like a frustration Ram Rider, and we see it on his face. Obviously, he is frustrated. The Musketeer still had the potential to shoot it. That way, it would help out the Mini Pekka. No shots on the tower. 1734, and just by his face, you can tell he has no idea how to make this even a game. And everything's going wrong. That Mini Pekka on the right-hand side going to get that final smack, take out the entire Electro Wizard as well. Lucas is not only down so much damage, a tower, but he's also down some Elixir in this situation. Vitor using one of my favorite decks in the game in its entirety of this Clash Royale, uh, you know, game in general. Uh, I just like the Prince instead of the Mini P.E.K.K.A. The Mini P.E.K.K.A. though, because it is quicker, that's the reason why we're seeing it in these decks. And it is so good against these Ram Riders. Right there, Ram Rider going to come down, Mini P.E.K.K.A. going to help out. And this is just too simple, too easy. And wait a second, that is a Ram Rider on the tower. 
but it's only down to 800 HP. Still a solid spot for Vitor. With only 20 seconds left, Lucas calls a good game. He realizes that he's not going to be able to take this right-hand side tower in time. He's going to go for a desperation push on this left side, but Mega Knight's going to drop down and clean it up. And I think that is going to be a good game. Wow, five seconds left. Mini Peck on top of the Mother Witch. It's not going to matter. Vitor taking game number three. And this man just heats up every single World Finals. It looks like he gets better and better as we go on. Fascinating stuff. Vitor going to secure that win. Lucas just not able to make the right plays happen. Or maybe, once again, it was another situation where the starting hands are just putting these players in a really tough spot. Let's hop straight into it, and we'll see who wins. So in Sweep's earlier set today, game number one, he did use the Lumber Loon Royal Recruits. Game number two, he did come out with Giant Sparky Graveyard. The game number two, it, it was argued that he got a little bit too aggressive. I think game number one, he played perfectly. Right here, he's going to need to play everything perfectly. And he's probably also going to have to get great matchups when Mo. I mean, you, you see his smile right here. It looks like he's in the zone already. Yeah, Mo's just not one of those people that you're really able to outplay. Sweep's so definitely going to need a nice matchup. Speaking of the matchup here, I would not be surprised if seeing a Royal Giant near matchup. It's really going to depend on Sweep's spell in this situation. We've seen this near match quite a bit, and it really matters if Sweep has the Fireball for the Zappy Dream. Fisherman will be able to yank the Giant Skeleton off to the side. Bomb will come down on top of the Fisherman. Not going to be able to yank him. Not going to be able to matter. That is a great defense for Muhammad early on. And only five Elixir. Skeleton King is going to come down. Hunter not going to do enough. But with the activation of the ability, this could get scary for Sweep. Sweep uses his own ability as well to try to mitigate, but he's forced to get a Fisherman down. Hunter's still getting some nice shots, and Fisherman's gonna be gone as well. Now Moe's up three, four Elixir. Sweep realizes his opponent plays well. He sends the well play, but Mo realizes his opponent's Elixir deficit and goes immediately for that RG at the bridge. RG will be able to get two shots, not gonna be able to get the third. Hunter doing a brilliant job. That could have been a lot worse. It, it was six to three, I believe, and an RG just on the board, but the Hunter, quick response, and uh, right there, another great interaction from Muhammad. No shots from the Hunter because of that E-Spirit placement. Now the Elixir is fairly even, almost completely even, but Mo's up over a 1,000 damage lead. Giant Skelly in the back from Sweep. Once again, I'm very interested to see Sweep's last card. If it is a Fireball, I think he can have a nice chance to try and come back, especially when you have this double Big Hoss, double Giant Skelly, Skelly King, uh, Roll Giant deck. Wow, and so look at the way he, he utilizes his Tombstone. A lot of players don't play it that way. They use the Tombstone just kind of to stack Skellies. We're seeing a lot of value from the Tombstones just because he's trying to force the Giant Skeleton to go to those troops instead of the Fishermen, the Hunters, and the Skeleton Kings. Really nice point there. Giant Skelly in the back from Sweep. Really nice Fireball from Sweep as well. Fireball Log. It seems like... Sweep's game plan right now is to just stack Giant Skellies in his right-hand lane, but Moe's completely fine with that game plan. He's just sitting back, defending as best as he can as well, and Sweep is going to have a very difficult time breaking through if he continues to play like this. This is a very fun matchup to watch because you get to see the difference when one player has the Giant Skeleton plus the Skeleton King going against the player who, uh, you know, it, it kind of feels like it's naked without the Giant Skeleton to place in front of the RG. That's why we saw the early Giant Skeleton at the bridge by itself because you aren't building those those strong, strong pushes the same way. That's why it's really cool to see how he's using the Tombstone, just because he has to play the game a lot differently than the normal way that Sweep gets to play. Absolutely, Sweep is starting to chip away a bit with some fireballs now, but once again, Moe's just focusing on very, very solid defense. Really nice Tombstone as well for Moe here, winning this Fisherman battle at the bridge. And they're just jostling, they're jostling, but Sweep needs a way to break through, and Moe's not giving him that opportunity. Right there, great Fisherman Yank. That is going to take out the Skeleton King. Skeleton King getting no value whatsoever. Six Elixir for Muhammad Light. Does he want to go in? A Elixir in response from Sweep. Will he be able to pull the RG? Is it going to matter? Pre-log not going to be able to hit anything, and that's okay. Eastbury taking out the Bats. Bats are gone off the board, but the RG is not. Lightning comes down, oh. and the RG takes it. Beautiful, almost perfect game for Mo there. Sweep sends the well played. He knows it as well. Game number two on its way.
Good luck from both players. A little emote from Sweep. He's feeling pretty comfortable. Mo is too. Miner from Sweep here. And my Miner's gonna pick that up quite nicely. So, so far throughout the day, the player that lost earlier in the day is currently one and two. Let's see if Mo will, uh, will make it one and three. That's right. It'll be three players that lost in day one will have the advantage in uh, day number two just because they didn't have to play. They didn't have to use those decks earlier on in the day. Uh, good point there. Looks like we're seeing a bit of a mirror matchup sweep going to a more meta situation once again. And honestly, if you are sweep in a situation like this, you're realizing you're going up against basically a mirror matchup against one of the best players in the world. Uh, this is just not a situation I'd like to put myself in. Yeah, that is a very intimidating uh, thing to see. We do see the Ice Spirit cycled over the middle. Will he be able to get out anything in time? Mighty Miner at the bridge and uh, you know, I don't, I don't really understand that. He, he wants to protect the mortar. It, it's one of those things where I know it's Mo, so I know it's correct, but I don't understand, and that's okay. I, I don't always need to know. I think the biggest thing here is that he just realized he's up elixir. He's forcing Sweep to continually defend, but it ends up working out. He does force out Sweep's win condition, the miner, as well as he gets a very nice mortar shot. Now. We're in a situation where Mo's still up some elixir. He's gonna reset with some guards in the back. We'll see if Sweep can try and turn the tides here to make something happen. See, when I watch Mohammed Light's gameplay, it's really cool because, you know, I, I, I write notes throughout the day so that way I can have questions, all that kind of stuff. But Mo is the player where I'm writing questions throughout the day just to ask him later on, why, why do you make that play? And I, 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 feel like, I feel like I might be able to become that kind of player if I just, if I ask enough questions. Yeah, Mo is definitely the right person to ask questions. I would love some free coaching from him. Yeah. But, no kidding. <laughs> but uh, back to the gameplay here. Mortar is connecting for sweep on this right hand side. Miner's gonna come down. Mighty Mortar. Miner is able to take out most of the mortar. Mortar plus poison will be able to take it out. Musketeer forced out in response. And we're seeing some brilliant split lane pressure from Muhammad Light. The, the two towers that are damaged are fairly even. Actually, everything is fairly even. Muhammad Light just has that advantage overall. Almost a perfect mirror match here. Only difference is Sweep is running the arrows. I think the arrows are going to be helping out just a bit because you can go for those pre-arrows along with your miner to try and catch some of those guards. And that's definitely something he's going to need to do if he wants to get the damage lead back in this match. 1758 to 2023. We do see the Ice Spirit placed perfectly. Not going to come out with the delivery in time, but with the help of the mortar, it is going to be cleaned up nicely. 20 HP separating the two players, and Sweep has to feel phenomenal about that. He's played this matchup very, very well. One of the main differences, arrows and delivery. He can use those arrows on offense. He can defend the guards every single time they get played, and Muhammad Light doesn't have that same opportunity. Absolutely, I like the mind games from Mo Light there. Sweep going for that pre-arrows every single time, but Mo is realizing that the pre-arrows will come down. And look how aggressive on the left-hand side he is. Very close match, but Mo's just barely... In. Oh wait, Mighty Miner! Ice oh. Spirit able to protect the tower just in time, 1128 to 1386. Oh. But that's okay for Muhammad, able to get the chip shot and well played coming out from Sweep. I mean, Sweep, I, I, I don't know if he has the matchup just because he can't cycle as quick as Mo. And I mean, knowing Mo, he's just so smart with every single situation. He just makes the right play time and time again. 638 to 1395, Muhammad Light is putting on a clinic. He does catch the miner with his own miner, but that's not how you want to be playing this game. You need to get your own miners on the tower. We're heading straight into Triple Elixir right now. Mighty miners are on the board. We have multiple mortars ever, but this poison's getting a lot of value on the defense. High Spirit not going to be able to matter. I think the guards are going to be in play. This is a weird situation. Okay, there you go. I was very scared that the guards were placed oh. a little bit too high. Musketeer coming out from Sweep. He has to use the Musketeer, oh. and the Ice Spirit gets the jump. Minor poison on the right hand side. At this point, Mo just needs one little bit of extra damage. Musketeer does get picked up, but the Miner's gonna connect, and that is going to be game. Muhammad Light going to take game two, knocking out Sweep out of the brackets. 
What do you think about that? Yeah, just a brilliant set overall for Muhammad Ali. He has really shown that he was able to recover from his earlier set in day number one. I think he's 4-0 and oh since then. Juicy, this was a wild day. We saw some crazy close finishes. What was your favorite moment of the day? My favorite moment of the day was watching Muhammad Light's last game. The micro was perfect. It was like watching an artist at work. I've never seen gameplay like that. We have our top six, our final, the best players in the world. The reason everybody flew here to Helsinki, Finland, on behalf of the whole squad here. Jackson Juicy J Wall, Andrew Guy, Joshua AC Sharon, Ibert Slayton. We'll see you back here tomorrow where we crown our Clash Royale League 2022 World Champion.